know what? You want a grand finale? I'm gonna give you a grand for the finale. I've seen her do much, much better on the show. Girl, what are you thinking? This is the finale of Drag Race. Hello, my beautiful Life Bright. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen, and I am the brightest queen in the box. Girl, if you are new here, or if you haven't already done so, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of Drag Race France, the grand finale. That is right, it is the grand finale of Drag Race France, and we are crowning a winner. But before we crown a winner, all the queens are back to show us their very best drag and their glow up. Because if you didn't know, the finale of Drag Race France gets filmed almost a year after the original season. The queens have had time to see themselves on television, have time to better their drag and prepare their most glamorous look. So speaking of which, let's get into these looks and find out who shined bright and who faded into obscurity. So we're gonna be doing this in order of elimination. The first one up, and the first one out is Aphrodite Amour. She is coming out in this red sequence dress with these red sort of feathers at the bottom. She then paired it with this tall blonde hair with this red heart in it. She said, my name is Aphrodite Amour, so I'm gonna lean into that and give you a whole heart themed dress because Amour means love and love means a heart. I love that she is getting into this branding. I wish this is something that she would have shown on the season itself. This would have been a really good idea to play on for the entrance look, but at least she is doing it for the grand finale. This entire dress looks really good on her. We only saw Aphrodite for one episode, so she was coming back with a little bit of a vengeance. And if I recall correctly, I actually liked one of the two looks that she showed on the first episode. So she was one of those really intriguing queens. And when she comes out with this look, it makes me like her even more and makes me intrigued even more. All in all, I think this is a very strong start and a very good showing for Aphrodite, showing that even though you were first out, it doesn't mean you are bad especially not if you're on Drag Race France because honestly Drag Race France knows how to turn up the fashion and that is exactly what she did with this runway so she is definitely getting a bow. Next up we have Magnetica and Magnetica is coming out in this sort of orange a latex dress. She then got these little feathers at the end of each one of these pieces and this multicolored striped piece coming down the front. She then paired it with this super sculptural hair and this mug that is painted. Talking about queens that got out way too early, we have Magnetica. Girl, this is amazing. And Magnetica was one of my favorites from the promo from episode one and episode two. So when she got kicked out as the second queen, I was shocked because I thought she was gonna win the whole thing. And she's coming out proving that she could have won the whole thing. Girl, this is such an amazing look. It definitely gives me a little bit of like maybe a Mexican vibes, but like done in a very elegant way, but also giving you futuristic avant guard and conceptual creature, which is what we've come to learn from Magnetica. Magnetica is very much a chameleon. She shapeshifts to every environment and she is doing it again here. This is a pure excellence and I love every minute of it. And I honestly hope that we see Magnetica on a future season, whether it be All Stars or Versus the World, because she was gone far too soon. This is simply amazing and simply going to be a bop. Next up, we have my sister from another mister, Miss Edia Noir. Edia is coming out wearing uh, this uh, black outfit with this black corset and this big black bustling skirt. She's paired with black sort of uh, lace gloves and this black uh, face piece with this big blonde hair. She said that her name is Noir, so she is coming out in full black and I think this is a very strong look for Edina. She's coming out wearing uh, lots of different textures. The corseted top really makes her cinched at the top, uh, but also creates a lot of contrast between this bustling hip, which definitely gives her a big hip shape. She then placed it with lace on her arms, which is also really good because it's got a lot of different contrasts of textures. But I think the part that's really the most interesting for me is this face piece. It's definitely giving me a little bit of like that 
Phantom of the Opera vibes and definitely giving you a lot of that theater that you need. She then paired it with this blonde hair, which I think is a really strong idea because this blonde hair is contrasting against the black because had it been black, it would have just been black on black on black, which I don't think would have worked as well. I think the blonde hair is just the right touch. Honestly, I don't really have much to say except for this is a really great look. And the only reason why she's probably not getting a really high score is because everybody is doing a really good look so far. So with that said, she is definitely going to get a... Oh. Next up, uh, we have Norma Belle, and Norma Belle is coming out with this uh, top and a skirt in this pale blue and white. She then paired it with this big black hair with all of the wavy bits to it. Now, Norma Belle is one of those queens that always surprises me because sometimes she goes in one direction and sometimes she goes in a completely different direction. So I've never really been able to identify what Norma Belle's style actually is. And here again, she comes out with a completely different look. This look is feeling very flowy, very beachy, and very elegant. It's definitely a lot quieter than what some of the other queens did which is surprising because as a finale you would think you would want to try to go bigger and brighter and louder than everybody else because you know everybody is bringing their best drag and I don't necessarily know that this is not my Belle's best drag that being said let's get into this hair and mama this hair is everything I love 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 this hair it feels like she's laying in water and this hair is floating or it feels a little bit like snakes it definitely is very much like a quafted hair I just feel like this hair could have been been better suited for a little bit of an edgier look not necessarily with this like really goddess simple look I think the dress is very beautiful it's just not taking me to that next level and because it's not taking me to the next level it's not gonna get the highest notes but it's still good enough to get a soft five. Next up, it's Perseo, and Perseo is coming out wearing her signature drag style, which is a very little clothing. She is coming out wearing these uh, white sort of like little uh, bottom bathing suit bottom with this white top, these white boots that are... I don't know how many inches tall and this giant headpiece. When it came to Pelsio, the first time I saw her, I was really intrigued because this was such a unique look. But as the season got on, we saw many, many versions of it. That being said, when she comes to the finale, she definitely saved the best for last. First up, I will, I do appreciate that she's actually caught some more coverage on the top. Sometimes Pelsio does like no top or just like a little bandeau and I feel like having just a little bit of extra fabric really takes it to a different dimension which I really appreciate but more than anything else it's all about this headpiece this headpiece is bigger than Perseo herself it is huge and she is definitely making a statement with it and when you're wearing so little clothing this is exactly what you need to do she said you know what you want a grand finale I'm gonna give you grand for the finale. I think this is super cool, super interesting, and definitely makes a statement. She definitely stands out. I don't think that she would have been able to do this on a normal episode of Drag Race because the headpiece would have been bigger than the set itself. But for the grand finale in this giant theater, this is how you get dressed for a theater. Even people at the back of the room will see this queen. All in all, I really enjoy this, and this is the best Perseo has ever looked, and definitely gonna get a bow. Next up, we have Misty Phoenix, and Misty Phoenix is coming out wearing this a black a corset with these a giant stars on it. She's then paired it with this orange sort of a ruffle a dress with a black gloves and feathers coming off of it. She's paired it with this a really beautifully clothed white blonde hair. Now, when this dress came out, I was a little bit surprised because Misty Phoenix has been turning out some looks. So coming out with this, this is much more of a simpler attire. Now, it is not simple by any means of the imagination because there is a lot going on but it is simple in its sort of execution. This definitely feels like a gown that you would wear to an award show. This is something that you can see definitely probably in a pageant or definitely on a red carpet but I was expecting a little bit more for the stage of Drag Race France. The reason I say this is because this is a stage so you are only going to be seeing this from quite far away but a lot of the beauty of this outfit is when you, you get up close with it. First off you don't even see the stars very much from far away but when you close up you do see them and they're fully rhinestone then when you get into this hair this hair is a very well quafted and definitely also has some rhinestones in it and then you got these feathers coming out of it all in all it is a gorgeous dress i just don't know that i would have chosen this dress for the finale that being said i can't really critique it and that is why she is getting a 
Bow. Next, we are moving on to the top four. And the first person to come out out of the top four is Le Philippe. And Le Philippe is coming out in this turquoise dress with uh, these arrows stuck into her with this sort of little red vibe. She's got her hands tied and her eyes covered. And she is definitely giving me Saint Sebastian vibe. You know, that a uh, Christian saint that was tied to a tree and got arrows thrown into him only to be healed and resurrected. I think that's how the story goes. Now, I don't know if that's what she is giving but if that is what she's giving I'm loving it because it kind of just saying like I was in battle I was on drag race and now I'm coming out stronger and better than ever and I'm loving it on top of it it is quite striking and quite ominous for a finale runway it's definitely making a statement and the colors are contrasting super beautifully she's got the teal she's got the red she's got the blonde it's all really working well together and still looking quite elegant while keeping a concept all in all, I think this is a very strong look and definitely going to be a bow. Next up, we have Leona Winter, and Leona Winter is coming out in this red, orange, and yellow uh, dress with this orange hair and this brown sort of headpiece. The dress looks a little bit like a tree. She's coming out with this brown body with these sort of leaves all around the front and all the way down the bottom. I also find that this tree gets emulated into her hair and is definitely giving me like autumn fall vibes. The only thing that I am confused about is why is she doing autumn and fall when her name is winter. Now, personally, maybe she was trying to go for a spring vibe to kind of say, I am now defrosting and entering the new era, and therefore, this is the new era of uh, Leona Winter. Had she wanted to do spring and not uh, autumn, then she probably should have added more greens into it as opposed to oranges and reds. That being said, that's maybe me interpreting this whole concept, but I do feel like there is a concept in it, because if you were going to do winter, you should have done a blues and whites, which we've seen her do a couple of times on the season. And so that wouldn't have been unheard of. When it comes to this dress, I'm really unsure. It's not a bad dress by any means of the imagination, but I've definitely seen her do better on the show. She's then paired it with this flat little kitty cat wig. And the reason she did this is probably because she wanted this headpiece in there. Personally, I think this would have looked better with a little bit more quafted hair, and then she could have also kept the headpiece into it and just found a way to integrate it. It just feels a little bit small for this big dress that it is. And the one thing that Leona does really well is knows how to put certain pieces on. The dress doesn't eat her up. It definitely still shows her body and still shows her look. All in all, it's okay. It's not my favorite. Like I said, I've seen her do much, much better on the show. That being said, it's still good enough to get a soft, Bye. Next up, we have Lula Strega, and Lula Strega is coming out with this sort of brown armored piece with these gold patches with this white flowy fabric. She then got her signature ginger orange hair with this giant headpiece at the front. First, let's talk about this hair. I love this hair and this sort of crown headpiece that she has on. It's definitely making a statement and it definitely reads from the end of the runway. And this is the type of drama that I would expect from a finale stage. This is a huge stage, you wanna stand out and this is what that does. Then we get into the dress itself with this armor piece and these pieces off of it. I feel like I've seen versions of this already done, so it's not necessarily super surprising for me, but then again, I am a huge huge drag aficionado like I watch drag race all the time I go to drag shows so I've seen a lot of stuff but this one is one of the ones that's better made I think that this looks really good on her I do also like the contrast of materials between the hard and the soft and also the pairing of this hair now if I had to critique one or two things it's actually very much about this armor piece I think had she done this armor piece I think it would have looked better a little bit more busty so that it would have given you a little bit more of that female el elegance or if she wanted to stick with this more male shape, then she could have done it in full rhinestone, which would have also taken it up an extra level. All in all, this is very, very strong, just not quite a perfect score, but still definitely a bow. 
And finally, we have a Ruby on the Nail. And Ruby on the Nail is coming out in this a white a long a dress with this a white cape and this beautifully quaffed hair. When she came out in this really simple dress, I was thinking, girl, what are you thinking? This is the finale of Drag Race. But honestly, it kind of works. I don't know why it works, but it definitely works. It is definitely saying that this piece is all about the hair. It's all about the sculpture that is the hair. She probably spent good money on the hair and that's why she's making it about this. I think this is also very different for somebody like Ruby on the Nail, hence why it works so well because it is so unexpected. It is super clean and super demure. It's also giving me like an elegant, more futuristic version of the Bride of Frankenstein, which I'm really loving. This is a dress I probably shouldn't love because it is going against everything that I said a drag finale should be but it just is super clean and super beautiful and looks super great on her and for all of those reasons I'm gonna go ahead and give her a bow. And that is it for this episode. But before we let you go, we are gonna do my Fab and Drab of the Week for one last time. So who had my Drab of the Week? Well my Drab of the Week goes to... Did you actually think I was going to give you a Drab of the Week? Girl, I gave fabs to every single one of these queens, so I am not going to give a Drab of the Week. And on top of them, they looked excellent, and it's their finale, so I am not going to say who I think is the worst, but you could probably figure it out from the ratings. But enough about the negative, uh, let's get into the positive. Who had my Fab of the Week? Well, my Fab of the Week this week goes to... Magnetica, I think Magnetica did a great job of coming back with a vengeance and showing you why she got kicked out. And the fact that she got kicked out second just goes to show you how much we could have seen had she been on a Caesar. So girl, get her on an All-Stars edition. With that being said, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you agree or disagree with my thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. This is the finale of Drag Race Friends, so I will not be doing any more episodes of this, but I am launching other episodes episodes of other seasons so keep your eyes out for that i want to say a big congratulations to le philippe for winning this season uh, congratulations mama you did that can't wait to see what she's going to be doing for the rest of the year with that said my name is neon noir at miss neon noir on all social platforms and i'll see you in one of my next videos Bye bye